Hey guys, it's Reptile X Aquatics, back at it with another video. Um, so today I'm going to be telling you guys how to sex snakes, or just basically showing you how I sex snakes. Uh, I'm going to be using Monty as my guinea pig for this video. Uh, are you right there? I'm talking. Yeah, it's quiet. Anyways, um, my bird's going to act up in this video. Um, so yeah, Monty's basically the one I'm going to be using in this video as a guinea pig. Boy. Quiet. Shut up! Can't win filming animals. Now before you get into sexing snakes, you need to understand the anatomy of a snake and how it works. So pretty much if you look under a snake's tail, at the base of their tail, there's a little um, flap pretty much. That little flap is their cloaca and that's pretty much where their genitals are kept. So if your snake is going to be a male, it'll have hemipenes in that um, in the cloaca. So it'll have two hemipenes. Male snakes actually have two penises, believe it or not. So for a male snake and a female snake, it's very different. Because a female snake doesn't have hemipenes, the actual amount of space in the um, in that cavity that they're kept in normally is very small. What I'm going to be using to sexy snakes are these. So these are probes, um, sexing probes for snakes specifically. Now there are different sized probes for different sized snakes. Monty's quite a large snake so I'm going to be using the one of the larger ones, not the largest one though, but one of the larger ones. Now I personally prefer sexing larger snakes because there's just more room for error. I wouldn't recommend uh, anybody just going and trying this without someone with you who knows how to do it and how to show you how to do it properly. Uh, because you can damage your snake if you do it wrong, if you're too rough, if you poke in the wrong area, you can do permanent damage to your snake. Um, anyway, so these little probes, as you can see, it's basically a metal rod with kind of a bulbous um, end to it. So it lowers the risk of any um, damage because it's not sharp. The other thing you will need when probing is this petroleum jelly. This is basically your lubricant for your probe. That being said, there are other things that people use. Some people have used Vaseline, I believe, but I've been told to use petroleum jelly by the breeders I know, so I'm just sticking to what I know. And yeah, pretty much all you have to do is you insert the probe into the cloaca, either on the left side or the right side. You don't want to go directly in the middle. You'll just hit a block in the middle and it won't go anywhere and you could again damage something if you force it. Uh, you want to go either on the left side or the right side because the left hemipene has a pocket and the right hemipene has a pocket. You're probing that pocket where if you were say doing a female snake the probe wouldn't go in very far because there's no hemipene so there's no need for a big pocket. So that's how you tell the difference where if you're probing a male snake the probe goes in a fair amount and you usually you can kind of stop your thumb to keep a mark as to how far the probe's gone in, so you can see how far it's gone in. You then match it up on the snake's tail, and you count the scales down. So if you do a male, it usually goes in between six and eight scales down. Female, maybe two or three. So, yeah, I'll go grab Monty. I'll show you how it's done. A few moments later. Okay, guys, <laughs> um, back with Monty. Now, like I said, I prefer doing bigger snakes because there's less room for error, it's just harder to damage. It's much easier to damage a smaller snake because it's a much smaller pocket you're probing, they're more fragile. Uh, bigger ones is not as much of a, as an issue, I suppose. It's easier in that regard. It's harder because right now I'm doing this by myself and he's kind of a handful. He's quite strong and he's, there's things around me he can wrap around while I'm doing this, so we'll just see how we go, I guess. <laughs> and right now I'm not in the best position because his tail is around the back and I need his tail. So I'm going to have to... And he's been really naughty today. He's, normally he's sort more calm. He's just really trying to run today. I think he knows it's happening. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Um, Alright, so you get your petroleum jelly. I'm going to do this kind of fast pace because he's not going to behave for long. Get your petroleum jelly on your rod. Be generous with it. Okay. Ah, he's got to squeeze on me too. Alright. I gotta be able to do this so you guys can see it. Uh, him being on me maybe isn't the best idea. Alright, I'm gonna put him down and try a different angle. Just give me two seconds, guys. 
a few inches later. All right, guys. So pretty much, I've got his tail here, and he's not gonna. He's gonna knock things over on it is because he's going into things over there. But I just have to let that happen. Um, yeah. So pretty much. Oh, you I made a weird angle here, guys. Sorry. You wanna? Again, normally there's a two-person job for a snake this size. So you wanna get your um, probe into one corner of the cloaca, whichever corner that may be. First you want to probe under the flap, get it under the flap, turn it around, and gently just um, work it in, like so, see so that's going in nice and slow. Be careful not to do any serious damage, nice and slowly. Right, and that's about as far as it's going without applying too much force. So that's his limit. So I put my thumb there to keep a mark on it. Slowly pull it out. That's how far that went in, where my thumb is. If you match it up to his tail from his vent, like where you entered the probe pretty much, count the scales. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine scales. So that's quite a lot. So, um,. Yeah, definitely a male. If it was a female, it'd maybe be like three scales. So that's pretty much how you do it. You can do it on the right side or the left side. There's um, other ways to do it. I mean, there's popping them where you actually squeeze there. Like, like you bend this back, squeeze those together, and the hemipenes pop out. I'm not gonna do that because that's even harder to do and it's just a higher chance of damage. If you do it wrong, you can damage them permanently as well. This way's it's more invasive in that in the aspect of yeah, actually probing them, uh, but there's less risk. That being said, it's not risk-free. If you are new to this, if you've never done this before, I would highly advise not doing it unless you have someone to show you who knows what they're doing. I'm just gonna, sorry guys, <laughs> some tissues and wipe him off. He's got jelly on him. All right, so that's probing snakes. If I was to probe a female snake, yeah, the probe wouldn't go in very far. Another thing of doing this, do it over somewhere where you got paper down or something like that, or not over carpet preferably. A lot of the time when you probe snakes, they'll wee and poo after you've done it. So I'm gonna pop Monty back because chances are he'll probably go and do that. Also guys, one other thing, uh, whenever you probe snakes, wash your probes when you're done. Very thoroughly, make sure they're fully sterilized. Whatever you have to do to get every single bit of germs off them, whether it's boiling them in hot water, spraying methylated spirits on them, um, just wash them really thoroughly because the last thing you want to do is use an unsterile probe on a snake and cross-contaminate if one snake's carrying some sort of a disease you don't want to pass it on to your other snakes. So you always wash your probes before you put them back in their case. I'll just show you again real quick. These probes do come in various sizes. Um, everything from hatchlings up until full-grown snakes. Now, these do have um, very like little probes in them. For hatchlings, they're never going to get used. I'm not probing hatchlings. As I was saying, bigger snakes, there's more room for error. Little snakes, you're asking for trouble probing them, I think. Um, you, and you can do permanent damage, you know, you can burst things, cause bleeding, and yeah, lots of um, lots of issues there. It's just worth, not worth doing it. It's, I'd rather just wait until they grow up and then sex them. I mean, look, you can sex snakes when they're about three foot long, four foot long sort of size, relatively safely, provided you have had some experience doing it, or you've got someone to show you and using the right probes. Smaller than three foot, I personally wouldn't go there with sexing them. I'm just not confident doing that because I just, there's no need to sex them when they're that small. Uh, they're not really breeding size anyways, so what's the point? You're just putting them at risk for no reason. Like, I already knew Monty was a male, but I'm just, yeah, for the purpose of this video, I'm showing you how it's done. <laughs> uh, in spite of, I'm sure, how much he uh, didn't appreciate that, yeah, he got probed. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, guys, this is just a quick video, just showing you how to probe snakes. There are other ways to do it. As I was saying, uh, there is another technique called popping snakes, which I don't do. Um, I don't really feel confident doing that because it's just too easy to do it wrong and damage them. 
Another way to do it, depending on the species of snake, if you're working with boa constrictors, it's much easier to sex them. There's not really any need to probe boa constrictors. You can just tell by looking at them because uh, male boas have fairly large uh, spurs on either side of their um, cloaca. So you can just look for those spurs. They kind of poke out a little bit so you can see them. So boas are no need to be probed. They're easier. Colubrids, you usually need to probe, unfortunately. Some species of snakes, again, you can tell just by the way their tail is shaped. Male snakes tend to have a very long, gradual taper from where the tail starts to where it ends, where female uh, snakes from where the base of the tail is, it's a very fast taper in the tail, as opposed to males having a very long, gradual taper, a very long, much longer, thinner tail from the base to the tip. There's a few species of uh, snakes that have that, but not many. Most other snakes, like most of your pythons, um, yeah, you have to probe them to find out what sex they are. So, look, if you aren't confident doing this, or if you don't have anyone that you know on a personal enough level or whatever to show you and teach you, um, there are breeders out there that can help you. Just, I'm sure, for those of you who do keep reptiles, I'm sure you know a couple of breeders. You can always ask them to uh, probe your snake for you. Worst case scenario, you can just book an appointment at your local reptile vet and they will sex a snake. So there is always a way to find out, but it does make life easier if you know how to do it yourself. But again, <laughs> I strongly advise you get someone to teach you if you've not done it before. Well, that's it for me, guys. I'm out of here. Hope you enjoyed my video and I hope it was helpful to anyone. I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. You know the drill, guys. Bye-bye.